Well, good morning, Darren. How are we? I'm wonderful. I'm, uh, I'm in the heat, in yeah. the but in air-conditioned room, in the heat in uh, the Middle East, so I'm living the dream. Yeah, well, you, see, you are indeed, and I just find this really curious that I'm talking to somebody that I've known for such a long time. I'm sitting here in the UK, you're sitting in Saudi Arabia, and we actually only live 10 kilometres apart here in England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, this tells the listener something that you, you've made every effort to get as far away from me as possible. <laughs> well, I can't possibly comment, Doug. <laughs> right. So what we're going to be ch chatting, of course, about, and it's great chatting with you, is our experience and the purpose to writing the book on team coaching. And uh, from my perspective, we, we, we're writing a number of these books and we're adopting the same approach. We're getting contributing authors, each of whom are experts or authorities on their topic. Well, that, that involves a degree of risk. I mean, firstly, writing something from the position of an expert is very challenging because you're putting stuff down on paper and you've got to be really confident that you know what you're talking about. And secondly, when you're writing with other people, the big challenge is, do they actually align with, with you? You don't find out until you actually begin to put stuff on paper. No, <laughs> not for sure. <laughs> and so for me, this is a really interesting experience. But the other thing I have to say, and you, you're included in this, Darren, every time we write a book with other people, I find it's not just a learning experience, hopefully, for the reader. It's always a learning experience for me, you know. Yeah. So I'm really interested. You volunteered to write a book on team coaching. And what came over to me was a real passion for team coaching, which is now beginning to be picked up by many, many people. Why do you think team coaching is coming to the fore? Um, well, first of all, Doug, Thanks for having me. I think the first thing that I would say is that I don't think it's just coming to the fore. I think it's been around for a very long time. It's just that people have not understood how to really leverage coaching as a vehicle to support team development. I think in the past, we've used wonderful facilitators, wonderful trainers to build a team ethos, to support the development of a team culture. But there's been recognition, increasing recognition, that actually having a trained and experienced professional in the field of team coaching can really enhance development. Um, overall, I think team coaching plays a crucial role in developing resilient, cohesive and high performing teams. And the environment with which we live today, I think, has accelerated the need for teams to be coached and supported. Because we're, we're facing changes every day. We can go back to COVID and go, yeah, that was an incredibly disruptive period. Um, and it changed the lives of everyone. And we're still facing significant changes globally, whether that's geopolitical issues worldwide and organizations are having to respond to that, whether that's environmental factors and we're having to respond to that, or whether it's just the demands of the organizations to meet changing technologies and how do we adapt to all of that? And people um, are incredibly resilient, I'm finding, and also adaptable, but everybody can do with some tools mm. and everybody can do with some opportunities to develop that increased self-awareness. And I think um, team coaching really enhances um, our ability to be self-aware. I mean, it was chiseled on the forecourt of the Temple of Apollo, Gnothisiotum, around 700 BC, that maxim of know thyself. And the Greeks know then what we know and research back today is that when individuals know themselves, they're better able to respond to the challenges and adversities that we experience every day in life. And team coaching enhances self-awareness of the system that we're all part of. So that's why I think it's needed. I probably could have said that a lot clearer and quicker, but it's I, I love the topic. Uh, me too, Darren, and I totally agree with you that uh, this is a big step in the evolution of team, how to engender team working. We've always spoken about team working being an important part of culture, 
but it's amazing how little progress we've made in so, so many ways. Yeah, I agree. Team coaching uh, is adding a layer of of expertise about how to do it and how to embed it. Uh, I totally agree. Uh, turning to the book, I mean, I, I kind of learned all of this from you and many other things. I really enjoyed working with you on the book. What were you trying to achieve through participating in writing the book? Oh, crikey. I mean, first of all, <laughs> courage. <laughs> I think when you asked me to be involved in the book the first time, the first feeling I had, and I don't know if you remember, was the butterflies in the stomach, a sense of anxiety. And I thought, I'm being asked to contribute to a book on mental toughness. I'm experienced in the whole concept of mental toughness from my time and career within the Royal Marines. And yet I was facing those feelings that I had when I applied to be a Marine in the same way that I was asked to contribute to the book. So the first thing was was courage. I think, well, if you're going to encourage other people to develop their sense of self-awareness and to try to master their own development in a number of different spaces, you should role model that. So I think the first one is, is to feel the courage that was needed to write the book. I, I left school with no qualifications. Um, and it's only through working with some fantastic educators, some fantastic coaches and being surrounded by leaders, not people who have the title of a leader, but those people who've led themselves and led others by their behaviours that has inspired me to learn more about myself. And I think the journey of writing a book um, helps you develop courage because you, you used the word expert at the start of our conversation, and I don't consider myself an expert. I consider myself as having an experience, and it's not always positive experience through team coaching. I've worked with leaders who go, Darren, I've got no idea where we're going with this. And I've had to trust my gut and go, and that's fine. By the end of today or by the end of this experience, we will all be better as a result of it. So you have to trust yourself that you have experience that you can add um, in this space. And I, I trusted the fact that I was working with you. You're an incredibly experienced and inspirational uh, friend and mentor. And I thought, you know what, I'm in a safe space. So I'm going to learn about me. I'm going to develop more courage to test things out. And hopefully I'll be an inspiration to my own children. And they can go, Dad, you know what, dad left school, no qualifications. And guess what is contributed to a couple of books. So, yeah, I think developing courage, developing self-awareness and hopefully being a positive role model to go, you know what, if you've ever thought about writing a book and you've not um, had the courage to do it, give it a go. They say oh. feedback is a gift and it truly is. Well, you, you, that's a great response because uh, you've touched upon a whole pile of things. Firstly, I think most people would regard you as an expert. But I have a beef about that term expert. I have a beef about people who call themselves experts. You're an expert if other people think you've got expertise. <laughs> it's something else if you think you're the greatest on the planet. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and your comment about courage, actually, I think is one of the, the things that strike, strikes me. We work, as you know, Taren, with so many coaches, literally thousands of coaches, but they're all individual one-to-one -one coaches and you get to talk to them about doing team coaching and this issue of courage comes up they are not comfortable with that and I think uh, that is something that hopefully we can uh, achieve through the book now, so you sp spoke about learning something about yourself is there anything else you learned as a consequence of writing the book well I think to the point that you've just made Doug get comfortable being uncomfortable is that the team coaching space is an uncomfortable experience. Yeah. There is no predetermined outcome other than you supporting the development of the team in a way that they want. So you're not going to walk in by the end of this session, we will have achieved X. Your job is to facilitate, to support the process and not, not have a determined outcome for yourself. Whilst the team might have some outcomes, for example, we want to enhance our communication. We want to be working towards shared goals. We want to collaborate more effectively. So we want to be more productive. We want to remove obstacles. We want to promote healthy conflict. We want to be more accountable. 
for our results. And importantly, we want to be adaptable and resilient in a rapidly changing business landscape. And the consequence might be our team members feel more empowered um, and we've got a more positive and inclusive environment. And as a result, our engagement surveys go up. But you've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable in this space. So I think from writing the book, I got more comfortable being uncomfortable writing it, thinking there are going to be people who I consider experts in the world go, what on earth is he put down? But I hope as a result of it that anybody reading the book can see this is a guide for practitioners. And my advice to anybody who's reading the book for the first time and going, I'm not sure how that model will work in the context of my work as a coach or a team coach, just to give it a go. Experiment with it because everything that is in the book are just tools and techniques that I've experimented with. And sometimes they've worked incredibly well. Sometimes they've been more difficult and challenging. Um, but you get better as a result of it. And fundamentally, everybody gets to learn. And I think that echoes uh, a lot of uh, approaches in people and organizational development. People will often walk around with a little toolkit of or it's a little bag of tools that they use. The reality is that all those tools work, but they don't all work for everyone, and they don't work all work every time. Experimentation is a, is an absolute must in yeah. when when you're working with people, because as you say, you don't know what you you're actually going to be working with. You don't know what the raw materials are, and very often you're not actually um, sitting there knowing what the outcome's going to be. So you've got to have that kind of flexibility and open-mindedness. No, I completely agree with you. And just coming back to this notion, uh, and I genuinely mean it, because the number of people that I talk to who are individual coaches that really do hesitate um, and, and moving into team coaching, and we, we, we try to promote team coaching more and more. I mean, firstly, a lot of clients don't know what it is. Um, and secondly, it's, when we talk about coaching as a solution for organisations, we often have to work with coaches who are not familiar with team coaching. And so if you were to suggest to somebody who's contemplating team coaching but might be hesitating, what are the one or two bits of guidance that you would give them? Well, I mean, the first thing that, that comes to mind as you were asking that question is that all coaches utilise a spectrum of skills to enhance mm -hmm. an individual's learning. From my perspective, my philosophy as a coach is teach, mentor, coach. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't do all of those three in any one session, but I may do. So I may need to teach somebody how to prepare to be coached. I may have some wisdom, um, I hope sometimes, that I could pass on that will be beneficial to an individual that no amount of question is going to be able to help them. Um, but I, ideally, I'm going to want to coach and support them because that's the real transformation. That's the, the route to long-term sustainable change. And it's exactly the same in the teach coaching space. So my thing is, is transfer what you know from the individual space to the team space. Yes, the dynamics are different. You're working with more, more than one person as opposed to one person. So my advice would be is think about how do you need to prepare people to be coached in the team space? So for me, one of the biggest learns that I had was before I engaged in team coaching, one, I'd interview the sponsor, I'd interview the team members, and then I'd book a session in with them for no longer than an hour just to explain to them what team coaching is and what team coaching isn't so they can expect what to receive whilst it not why not say this is the outcome but you go this is this is the journey that you're likely to go on but we're going to build that journey together but there are some fundamentals we're going to talk about trust we're going to talk about how we might create a safe space for dialogue to take place and we may use a tool such as the MTQ Plus or another to highlight opportunities to learn and grow. So for me, it's utilizing the process you've got for one-to-one -one coaching and apply it in the context of the team. 
The second thing I would say is if you can, and it's possible, partner up with somebody. Team coaching is exhausting, mentally and physically exhausting. And just having an additional pair of eyes, um, some additional pair of ears to support you on that process um, is a real opportunity. So they're the, 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 the big two things. That's brilliant. And of course, you tell them to go and buy a copy of this book that you've heard. That was the third thing, Doug. Buy the book. <laughs> yeah. I suppose the last thing I'd ask, <laughs> having spoken about uh, the butterflies at the beginning of the journey, would you do this again? Yes. <laughs> I say it. I've made a note of that, Darren. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, interestingly, the, the other series of books I... I very fortunate to be asked to, by you to edit um, one of our series of books. And again, wow, what a tough experience that was, but what an immense learning experience. Getting to read the work of other coaches um, and professionals, uh, you can't help but learn through the process. Um, so I've learned an immense amount from being part of that process. So, yeah, absolutely. And Lovely. I think you can only get better. You'll get feedback. Some would be good, some would be bad. And the bad stuff, I think, is probably the most powerful feedback. Because if people disagree with how you approach a process or they have an idea about how to improve it, well, again, you're role modeling what you're encouraging your clients to do as well. Experiment. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. So the message to the listener is you don't have to put yourself through all of the pain that Darren's been through to write the book. You just need to read it now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 